looking to the slope at those points. Positive increasing, zero. Negative decreasing, zero. Increasing, zero. Decreasing, zero. So everywhere where we get a slope of zero, we're going to have a possible relative max or relative min. What we call those are critical numbers. So what's happening to the slope at a relative max or min? The slope is zero. So at all these points, note, the slope is zero for the relative max or relative min. The point at which a curve has a horizontal tangent, or in other words, the slope is zero, is called a critical number or a critical point. That's a little definition. think about this for a second, all right? If your critical number is a place where your slope equals zero, do you understand the definition, firstly, of a critical number? Critical number is a place where your slope equals zero. Are they always relative maxes or mins? No, they're not. You can have other things that happen. So, for instance, uh, this curve. Do you have a point where the slope is zero? Yeah, but this is not changing from increasing to decreasing. It goes from increasing to nothing to increasing again. Just a different concavity. Do you see it? So that could give you a relative max or min, but it doesn't have to. That's the idea of a critical number. It's just a place where your slope is zero. So if we're trying to find out where all of our slopes are zero for a function, can you explain to me maybe the process of doing that? Let's pretend I give you a function. I say, I want you to find the critical numbers. What might you have to do to find the critical numbers? Take the derivative of the zero. So the derivative gives you slope, true? Mm -hmm. If I take the derivative and I set it equal to zero, I'm going to find out all the places where my, all the critical numbers, where my slope equals zero. Do you follow me on that? That's going to give me all my potential relative maxes and mins. That's the idea. So to find your critical numbers, we're going to take the first derivative and set it equal to zero. Take first derivative, set it equal to zero. You okay with that as well? One more side note. Um, if you get a fraction, typically all you have to do is solve for zero is to set the numerator equal to zero, right? For this process, what we're going to learn is that for both the first and second derivative, I'm going to give you a first and second derivative test in a little while, like probably a week. Uh, but when you get there, you also have to check the points where the denominator equals zero as well. So if you get a denominator, you must set that equal to zero as well. That gives you undefined points for your slope. You need those, right? You need any undefined points for your slope. That's important. So little note, <coughs> if you have a denominator, set the denominator equal to 0 as well. That could give you any undefined points for your slope, which would be a big deal. You can change from increase and decrease to undefined points. Let me prove that to you. Increasing, true? Decreasing, yes? Slope is undefined. You're going to change from increase and decreasing at that point. Even though it's not differentiable, that gives you a point of change of increase and decreasing. Do you see what I'm talking about? So denominator in the first derivative? In the first derivative. You yeah. said it equal to Yes. Okay. The de denominator of the original function will just tell you where you're undefined. A lot of times, that will match up. Okay? Where you're undefined in the function is where you will be undefined for your slope. Most of the time that happens, but occasionally you get some weird stuff that happens. So you need to do both. 
Can we do an example to finally get away from all this theory stuff and really get into an example? Can we do that, please? Yeah. Are you guys ready for it? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's find the critical numbers. This. Find the critical numbers of that thing. What are we going to have to do to find the critical numbers? Well, critical numbers involve slope, right? It asks, where's the slope equals zero? So find the slope function right now. That means take a derivative. Go ahead, take a derivative. Derivative should be pretty easy. What's the derivative of this thing? Man, I'm a nice guy. Don't you see I'm a nice guy? I'm a nice guy. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Why? Why is that nice? What are you going to have to do? That just gives you the slope, right? Because you just found the derivative. Derivative means slope. Our critical numbers occur where our slope equals what? Zero. Set equal to zero. Solve it. That's going to give you the x values where your slope equals zero. Can you solve that? Yeah, that's like a piece of cake to solve. What are you going to do? That's all my nice guy. You have options, really. Add three divided by three. Square root with a plus and minus. That's going to give you plus and minus one. Factor out the three different squares, plus and minus one. Either way, you can do that two ways, OK? So in either case here, x equals one, x equals negative one. Are those my points for my relative max and relative min? Those are my x values of my potential points for relative max and relative min. Are these, in this case, yes. This is going to be a relative max and a relative min. Uh, this one should go max min. Okay, that's what that should be. Now, uh, we're going to talk all about that later. Right now, I'm just asking to find critical numbers. I'll show you how to determine that at a later time. Are you all, all right with that? Are these always giving you relative max and relative min? The answer is no. No, they're not. I've given you one example of that already. This right here is going to show up as a critical number. Is it automatically a relative max or relative min? No. No, there's some cases where it's not. Okay, so you really do have to check on those. I'll show you how to check on them later, but they're not automatically relative max or relative min. We're going to switch gears just a little bit. We're going to move from relative max and min to absolute max and min. Now, what's absolute mean? The highest point. Yeah, absolute value would be like positive, always positive, but absolute means it's the most high or the most low. Relative, you're noticing this, we can have lots of relative maxes, right? Think about a sine curve. Oh my gosh, there's relative maxes all over that thing. Those all happen to be the absolute max for a sine curve, but they're all relative maxes as well. For the absolute max, it says what's the highest number you attain, if any. Relative absolute max and absolute min means what's the highest or lowest value you attain throughout the whole so we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about how to determine it. It's not bad, so don't, don't let it scare you. So when we talk about the absolute max, what we mean is the highest point on an interval, overall, the highest point that happens on that interval. Well, then that would mean the absolute min means the lowest point on an interval as well. Not one of the low points, the lowest. That's what the absolute, how that differentiates from the relative. Relative could be, well, there's a few low points. Absolute min means the lowest. Absolute max means the highest. On an interval. Now the interval could be from negative infinity to infinity, uh, but a lot of graphs don't have an absolute max or min on negative infinity to infinity. Um, in fact, lots of polynomials don't. 
So we talk about on intervals as well. So some graphs don't have absolute max or min. on this interval. For instance, just think of a, an x cubed, okay? <clears throat> What's the highest point that attains? So it, can you say the number? Does it reach a peak? Ever? Do you know how much infinity is? Because I do. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, it's infinity. It never reaches an ending point, does it? It doesn't reach a highest point. It keeps going and going and going and going. Does it ever have a low point? The lowest point? No, this doesn't have an absolute max or an absolute min. How about this one? Does that have an absolute max? Max. Does it ever reach the highest point? No, it's infinity. Does it have an absolute min? Yes. It's right there at zero, zero. That does have one. But so you'll see in this, some curves don't have the absolute max or min on negative infinity to infinity. Some do. Most don't. Every polynomial doesn't have, it has one or the other, because polynomials go to infinity somewhere or another, right? They, they're never uh, as horizontally asymptotic, so you're always going to get one. So we, we like to distinguish between everywhere and then certain intervals. So an absolute max is going to be the highest point on an interval that you say it is. And the, the absolute min is going to be the lowest point on an interval that is defined for you, or the, that you say it is. Do you follow that, that logic there? Okay. Okay, so even though some graphs don't have an absolute max or absolute min on this, let me make a little suggestion to you. I'm going to suggest that every curve in the world has an absolute max and an absolute min on a closed interval. Would you agree with that? On a closed interval, so if I say from 3 to 2, there's going to be a highest point, there's going to be a lowest point, as long as the function is continuous. Yes? We don't want this idea. That would not. But as long as it's continuous, that's going to happen. So this, not so much. But every function has an absolute max and min, if the function is continuous, on any closed curve. any closed interval. Open interval? Not necessarily. We'll talk about that in a bit. But closed interval? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, here's, let me, let me talk about one little piece of information you kind of need to know. Uh, every continuous function, what that means is the function doesn't have to be continuous for the entire space of human existence. What it has to, or X existence, I guess, whatever. But it has to be continuous on that, that closed interval. Does that make sense to you? It's got to be continuous here. If it's continuous there, it will certainly have an absolute max, a highest point, and an absolute max.